In 1969, CRA, an Australian subsidiary of the British mining giant Rio Tinto Zinc, forcibly established a copper mine on Bougainville. From the beginning, the island's people resisted the construction of the mine. The building of the mine saw 800 villagers landless and another 1,400 without fishing rights as land was seized and rainforest cleared. The subsistence life of gardening and fishing was destroyed. 220 hectares of rainforest was poisoned, felled, burned, and bulldozed. After 20 years, the mine had grown to a huge crater, half a kilometer deep and nearly seven kilometers in circumference, creating over a billion tons of waste. In 1988, after two decades of ignored protests, petitions, and compensation claims, Bougainvillians had had enough. A handful of islanders stole company explosives, destroying electricity pylons, buildings, and machinery. By using guerrilla tactics, they succeeded in closing the mine. Until the war broke out in 1988, the mine accounted for around 45% of all Papua New Guinea's total export earnings. Papua New Guinea, PNG, with the assistance of Australia, responded by sending in the military. Following this, Bougainville declared itself independent from the PNG, and the Bougainvillians formed the Bougainville Revolutionary Army, BRA, to defend their land and their environment from further exploitation. There were over 10,000 killed in Australia's secret war. The Australian government claims that it does not support PNG's war on the people of Bougainville, but Australia has been funding arming and directing the PNG military since the beginning. Australia provides Papua New Guinea with $32 million in military aid, plus much more in untied aid. This information was all brought out in the documentary The Coconut Revolution. Again, we can clearly see how the United States, Great Britain, and other European nations have pillaged, raped, robbed, killed, and destroyed countries, from Iraq to Libya, the Congo to South Africa, indigenous lands of Australia to the Indian Ocean, all in the name of greed. I wonder if you'd believe this as a solution to the Aboriginal problem. Herd the worst of the Aborigines into one area and put a chemical in their water that sent them sterile. In time, there'd be none of them left. Well, that solution has been put forward by none other than one of the Premier's closest friends, West Australian mining magnate, Lang Hancock. Those that have been assimilated into you know, earning good living or earning wages amongst the civilised areas that have been accepted into society and they have accepted society and can handle society, I'd leave them well alone. The ones that are no good to themselves and can't accept things, the half caste, and this is where most of the trouble comes. I would dope the water up so that they were sterile and would breed themselves out in peace, and that would solve the problem. Now, I wouldn't mind, Philip, if it was just the black, the true Aboriginal, but there are so many hybrids, and they are nearly white, and this is where it hurts. Now, I wouldn't mind, Philip, if it was just the black, the true Aboriginal, but there are so many hybrids, and they are nearly white, and this is where it hurts. Now, I wouldn't mind, Philip, if it was just the black, the true Aboriginal, but there are so many hybrids, and they are nearly white, and this is where it hurts me.